Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. There we go. All right. there we go. Good morning and welcome <laughs> to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics of that um, could be of interest to libraries. Um, the show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, and we do record the show every week as well, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's okay. You can watch the archives on our website, and I'll show you where that is at the end of today's show. Uh, both the live show and our archives are, <clears throat> excuse me, are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, neighbors, family, colleagues, anybody who you think may be interested in any of the topics we have here. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, uh, book reviews, interviews, uh, mini training sessions, demos of products and services, uh, basically anything that we think may be of interest to uh, libraries and librarians out there and library staff. And as the Nebraska Library Commission, we are the state agency for libraries here in Nebraska, and that is for all libraries. So we have sessions that are for publics, academic, K-12, schools, uh, correction facilities, museum libraries. We're very broad, <laughs> anything and everything. Um, and we have things that um, are things that libraries are doing. We bring in um, speakers from libraries across the state and across the country to speak. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations about things that we are doing here at the Library Commission for libraries. Um, but, uh, but as I said, we also do bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have this morning. Um, today with me is all the way over on my left or right, whatever. At the end there, <laughs> Aaron Willis, who is uh, from the uh, Lincoln City Libraries and is the curator of the um, Heritage Room of Nebraska Authors there which is, she'll explain more about all that we'll, as we get into exactly what we're talking about here today. Um, and Karen Dalziel here, who is from the uh, UNL, University of Nebraska at Lincoln, Center for Digital Research in the Humanities. Good job. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I cheat, I got on the screen here. <laughs> and um, they're going to tell us about um, the new Nebraska Authors Database, which just debuted officially this past weekend. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> all right. So I'll all right. Get the mouse done. Yes, you can do what you need to do. And you can take this too. All right. Well, thank you all for being here and for tuning in today. Um, I uh, hope you've all had a chance to look at the website. I, and they can see this right now, right? Yes. Um, so the, the website that we are going to talk about is NebraskaAuthors.org. Um, you should be able to see it here. And um, I'm going to go back a little bit before we start um, getting into the website and talk uh, about how the, the website started and why it started. Um, but first, I'm going to explain the Jane Pope Gesky Heritage Room of Nebraska Authors. We are a special collection of Lincoln City Libraries. We've been a publicly accessible collection for 50 years, uh, 50 years this September. And so um, the collection is a physical archive, but the mission of the Heritage Room is to preserve, promote, and celebrate the work of Nebraska authors past and present. And so part of the way um, that we do that is by maintaining vertical files, um, so individual files for individual authors of information that's been uh, discovered by our volunteers. And we discover information about authors um, several ways. We have uh, newspaper clippers who um, scour Journal Stars, Omaha World Heralds, um, smaller newspapers that are sent to us. And then we also rely on public um, patrons, librarians, people who send us information about Nebraska authors. And that information, after it's clipped out and copied on acid-free paper for preservation, mm -hmm. uh, we have been, for the last 30 years inputting it into a database, um, which we called the Nebraska Author Information Link. Uh, NAIL is the acronym. Mm -hmm. We called it the NAIL file, uh, which is very cute. Yes. <laughs> but we uh, always like our acronym. <laughs> right? um, but we uh, didn't think that was the best name for a website. So <laughs> that's um, the information on that um, on that database. It, um, two years ago was when we stopped inputting information in the database and switched over um, to the UNL, Center for Digital Research and Humanities. Mm -hmm. um, Karen, who's with me, will talk a little bit about what they do, but we passed off all, in, all the information that we've been collecting for the past mm -hmm. 50 years, wow. um, gave it to Karen, and <laughs> she'll tell you um, maybe just a little bit about what the CDRH does and okay. how, how that happened. Okay. 
Um, so yes, I work at the Center for Digital Research in the Humanities at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and we are a center, as the name implies, that works with um, all things digital and humanity. So this project fit in very well with that. Um, we have a Nebraska portal. So if you go to our website, um, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, there's Karen. <laughs> yeah, there's me. Um, and Jessica and, and another, the, the oh, person that, that helped um, was Greg Tunney, which I, let me scroll down a little bit and get him in there. There's Greg. There's him. <laughs> so we are the ones that kind of built it. But if you go to our website, um, you can see we have a Nebraska portal. So I haven't actually added this yet. I should have done it before today, but um, it'll be added to this. And these are all our projects that have to do with Nebraska. So this project fit very well into that, that family of products. Um, and so uh, my boss, Kay Walter, who is the co-director of the center, actually was researching for a different website. And she went to visit the nail file and was very frustrated by the searching limitations on it. And so, um, she kind of said this would be a great project it fits in very well with our nebraska themed um portal and we should we should make this more accessible because before also you you had to go to the library or else you had to call a librarian and have right. them mm -hmm. search in the database, it was internal right? only yeah, yeah. so so only. people couldn't just search it online and so um that's kind of the origins of the project right yeah. so this is a um cooperative project of the cdrh in the heritage room and um, I'm going to go back a little farther now just to explain the librarian's role in understanding Nebraska authors and Nebraska literature. A um, hundred years back, in fact, to the first resource that was available to librarians. It was published in 1918, um, and it was called A Provisional List of Nebraska Authors. It was um, published by a librarian, a public librarian, Sophia Lemmers. And um, I'm just going to read a little bit from the introduction. Uh, the introduction was written by Malcolm Wire, who was also a librarian. Um, and this explains, you know, their, the first attempts to sort of um, keep track of Nebraska authors as a group. Um, and he says, this list of Nebraska authors has been prepared to answer the many demands for such information that have come to this library. The frequency with which this reference inquiry appears not only in our library, but elsewhere is shown from the fact that manuscript lists of Nebraska authors have been compiled at Lincoln City Libraries, State Library, Library Commission, State Historical Society, Legislative Reference Bureau, um, et cetera, et cetera. The introduction goes on and on. But every independent library, the Library Commission, the Historical Society, we were all um, trying to gather information on Nebraska authors. And, and there wasn't doing it separately. And doing it separately. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there was a whole lot of redundant effort happening, and there was no um, no one really aggregating this information and coming up with a um, authorit authoritative definitive list of authors. So <clears throat> the 1918 book was the first book to um, to really collect all this information. And what he says, I think, rings true today about Nebraska uh, or librarians um, receiving a lot of requests about Nebraska authors. I know at the Library Commission, oh, yeah. um, I've talked to your librarians and, they, you know, <laughs> that's always a question of like, what Nebraska authors published a book in 2017 or, or you know, whatever, who who are the Nebraska authors who live, who are from why more? Or, you know, I mean, there, there are different questions that come up um, and there isn't, uh, to my knowledge, a way to, until now, <laughs> to, um, to answer um, to answer those uh, questions. Um, and it, I will say it's still a work in progress. We still can't, you know, um, <clears throat> be sure that we have all of the information that's out there. But we're, um, this is a, this will be a, a living website for a while. So we're hoping to have um, more contributions for, um, from everyone, from librarians and the public. But, um, Moving forward a little bit, there was another guide published in 1934 by a librarian, Alice Harvey. Um, and this this is the funniest bit um, for me, is that in 1934, Willa Cather had already published, you know, quite a lot of, I mean, oh, she had yeah. already won um, the the Pulitzer Prize. I mean, she, it, it was, um, she was a big deal and we had um, great literature coming from Nebraska, but Alice Harvey writes in her introduction, Nebraska is still in its infancy as far as literature, as li far as literature is concerned. It takes many hundreds of years to produce the background and traditions of a nation. Um, and little can be expected in the short time this Western country has been developing, but we are proud of our beginnings of our literary work here in Nebraska. Um, so that was in 1934. She published a reissue in 1967 saying, whoa, we've got a lot of great authors in Nebraska. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, and then uh, later on, you know, there, there have been several um, less official guides published, but in 1967 for the Nebraska Centennial, there was a, um, a literary map and author guide published, and this literary map is now 
at the um, at the Library of Congress. And mm -hmm. so and the, the, there are literary maps for most states at the Library of Congress. Mm -hmm. That was updated in 1998 by Jerry Cox and Carol McDaniels with a new literary map. Um, and the, uh, <laughs> Dr. Brooke, who Karen probably knows, the um, center or the Nebraska Writing Center. Mm -hmm. um, he wrote the introduction to the book, and I I love this I love this piece. Um, so this is from the very end of his introduction to the Guide to Nebraska Authors, which was the 1998 edition. Um, and Robert Brooks says, they're a diverse set representing a range of fame, occupation, and purposes for writing. They are all members of Nebraska communities, folk who live or once lived just down the, just down the street. You'll find someone you know in these pages. Writers, you might say, well, here in Nebraska, they're folk just like us. <laughs> um, and I think that's I think that's something that's kind of unique to Nebraska is that we um, we have this closeness to our to our authors and to our literature, and I, I think we identify yeah. so profoundly with their you know with their themes and um, and with the authors themselves. And so I'm hoping that this um, this and website the authors, will they too are just like I mean it sounds like they're just regular folk, even though they're not. I mean, I went to, it was, I think it might've been when you and I went to ALA years ago, mm -hmm. um, Brandon Sanderson was there. Oh, signing, right, yeah. doing, Along with other, you know, big sci-fi authors with mm -hmm. um, um, Cory Doctorow yeah, him, yeah, and a couple other. Yeah. And we went mm -hmm. to him to get signed. He's like, oh, Nebraska, hey. <laughs> yeah. And we were in what, DC or something, mm -hmm. Washington DC, I think. And it was just like, oh, hey, from home. Yeah. yeah Brandon Sanderson <laughs> is a good example, actually, because he's still, um, I mean, he's still very loyal to Nebraska. And mm -hmm. I, um, a couple of times that we have librarians at Lincoln City Libraries who know him and know how to get in touch with it, you know, yeah, and I'll our, just give him a call. Yeah, and yeah. It's, um, and I, I've never personally talked to Brandon Sanderson, but, mm -hmm. um, but, I have talked to Rainbow Rowell, who I, you know, I was, I was sure. really excited about that. But yeah. that, um, that authors are people, um, and that you know we we can connect with them, and especially um, on the website, we'll show you how to <clears throat> submit information about Nebraska authors if you know Nebraska authors or you know something about Nebraska authors, and it's something we're missing. Um, we want to know about it because we um, because we know there are people in your neighborhoods, um, there are people who visit your libraries, mm -hmm. and um, and we want those people to be acknowledged. So um, before we move on to the website, though, I do want to acknowledge the final or the most recently published um, book, Physical Guide to Nebraska Authors, and that was uh, an it. Um, another extension of the Guide to Nebraska Authors that was published by Jerry Cox and Carol McDaniels. Um, and this one was the Sesquicentennial um, Guide to Nebraska Authors. Mm -hmm. It was just published last month by Infusion Media, and it's the Guide to More Nebraska Authors by Jerry Cox and Charlene Neely. And um, their comment, you know, for <laughs> um, bringing this thing up to present time, their, um, their comment in the introduction was that history tells us the number of Nebraska authors publishing every year is not diminishing. <laughs> it's only getting uh, only getting more. And that readers are um, readers are interested in local authors who produce compelling stories. And so we know that there are readers in Nebraska who want to read the indigenous literature of our state and they want to read from authors who are writing right now. And so we hope this can be a resource for you to help find those uh, find those books. Mm -hmm. All right. So should we move on to the website? Are there any questions or anything about this part or should we go ahead and Show people. Uh, so. no. All right. Yeah. If you have any questions, comments, um, type into your question section. We'll grab them and then as, as you do. Yeah. All right. So this is when you go to NebraskaAuthors.org, this is where you land. Um, and this will tell you just a little bit about the history and um, some of the, the more famous uh, Nebraska authors. Um, and then let's go straight to the browse feature and Karen can tell you how our <laughs> featured authors, I've tried to explain this several times there. Um, every time you refresh this page, you'll get a new set of featured ah. Nebraska authors. So if you're just, you know, if you want to direct somebody to the page, maybe, you know, you might say, oh, Christopher Lash, who, you know, who's this guy? And then you can, um, you know, you can click on it if you don't know, quite know who you're looking for, but just want to learn something about Nebraska authors. Um, this is the place to just browse and, and that's automated. And see. It's not like each month somebody picks and says no. Who's and it's actually uh, it's authors who are collected by the Heritage Room because that's mm -hmm. a that's a metadata field that we have in there. Uh -huh. And then um, whose bios are longer than a certain number of characters. I think it's like a thousand or something, so that we know that they're going to be long enough to actually be Some interesting. Features. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So really featured, you know, they're featured in that they have a fleshed out 
profile and then yeah, collected by the heritage room. Yeah. yeah. Well, so just using, um, we'll just click on Christopher Lash for uh, for an example. Um, this is an author who is done well, <laughs> whose uh, whose profile is um, pretty much fully fleshed out. We don't have this isn't true for all the authors. In a lot of cases, even some of our more important authors, um, we don't have a great complete bio. We don't have um, we don't necessarily have them linked to everyone. This this is a process that takes quite a lot of time. Um, so we started working well. We started the process of doing this website two almost two years yeah. ago, and um, so the the center for Karen and her staff have been have been developing the website, and then the library staff and volunteers and student interns from the university. We have been working through Nebraska author profiles, and there are four thousand more than four thousand three hundred individual author profiles. So even with a staff of people working on them individually, it still takes quite a lot of time to um, mm -hmm. flesh, out, flesh them out, especially with authors continuing to pub publish information and continuing mm -hmm. to receive awards. I mean, this is a, this is a process that takes time. But, um, but Christopher Lash is a, is a well done author, I think. Um, this one was done by Lincoln City Library's employee, Stephen Cloyd. He wrote the introduction. Um, and the introductions where we have them are original um, unless they were submitted by an author directly. So we don't want to be a Wikipedia site. <laughs> we uh, we don't want to be a, just copying what's already in Wikipedia no, or in some uh, other national author. It, no, we don't. We don't want to. Do, that's um, that's what we're absolutely trying to avoid. So any information that you see on the website, we want to reflect the collection holdings. So if we have um, a vertical file on an author writing an introduction like this, if, if you know, Stephen Cloyd has some personal knowledge of Christopher Lash, for example, he mm -hmm. uh, was a student of Lash's and so he, um, he knew, um, knew some things about him. And then we also have these great files that are great resources for us that we can, we can craft um, a pretty complete um, or, a, you know, a good picture of what, what you would find in the Heritage Room collection. And so um, like I said, this takes time. So we have a couple of student interns whose entire job is to to look at, you know, to make, create a, a biography, a bibliography, um, and sort of separate out all these associations on, and honors um, just from from heritage room materials. Um, this will necessarily change a little bit because of um, I think we've all seen enough of Christopher Lash. We can we can go back to the browse and see who else comes up. Um, oh, Mignon Everhart is a good one. Um, but, um, what's happening now is that we are, we're accepting new author profiles. And so anything that comes to us now, if an author sends it to us, we, we use as our source author submission. And so it's possible that you'll also find this on their Amazon profile and on their, um, or personal profile on their places. website, you know? Yeah. So I think, um, for a lot of these authors, these older authors like Mignon Everhart or like Christopher Lash. These are our, our own original, um, but any modern authors, um, we're not going to be able to keep up with <laughs> with creating uh, original content for them. That's and great so, that they'll submit it to you on the on, to help you. Yeah, out. yeah, and but they'll submit themselves. it to us. Yeah. But um, but unfortunately, a lot of those are going to be um, unless we get a lot of you know funding to really <laughs> to really create mm -hmm. these things on our own. Um, you will see probably some some redundancies with uh, with mm -hmm. author websites and author sure. profiles and Goodreads profile, you know, things like that. But um, then would you then, in, would that be indicated on the entry here? You um, yes, you even well, better? so this is, um, librarians will have a privileged view. There's there's a field oh. that, uh, that you don't see here and uh, Karen can explain, well, I don't know if we're extending the, the, re the researcher role. Yeah. So um, we have, when we're putting information in, we have several fields that are hidden um, that that we uh, that we see. Mm -hmm. So one of them is the the source field, and right. um, and part of that part of the reason that's hidden is because we haven't uh, we haven't we're not using APA citation style. You know, we don't board, have it. Yeah, okay. yeah. So we have our we have our citation. We've fully sourced everything, but we haven't used a uniform citation style and I didn't want to put up on the website anything that didn't look at. <laughs> exactly exactly Somebody so quite say something yeah. yes so if someone does want to do more research they can contact you right right at this and, point mm -hmm. and you and librarians can get access to that other role which also gets you access to the unpublished authors because there are a number of authors that have not been published yet because they have to be vetted in this process it takes a lot of time mm -hmm. a lot of volunteer work 
Um, so we don't want to put it out there for the general public, but this is also something that if you, if Aaron can make you an account and um, right, right, and you can use it to view all of those types of things. And so that is an option. If you find that you're answering a lot of questions for Nebraska authors, there is um, there is a way for you to to have greater access to the website and to be able to see to see some More of the some of the fields that are. Um, privileged library and access. So, <laughs> so, um, so get in touch with me. Well, I will let you know how to do that at the end. Or actually, I'll just show you on the website how to get in touch with me. Um, but let's look at Mignon Eberhardt just for a minute. Um, she was one of the great uh, mystery writers. She was a former librarian at the, or I mean, at Lincoln City Libraries. And, um, and I don't know if it says it on here. It probably says it in a hidden field that she, she got, bored <laughs> and um, decided to write mysteries. Um, and so she was um, prolific in her time and had some really great fans. Um, Harry Truman, Edith Stein, or Gertrude Stein, I'm sorry, um, were fans of her work. And her biographer, uh, Rick Seipert, if he hasn't changed jobs, is still um, is still working at Nebraska Wesleyan, I believe. Um, and so this is one of the cool things that you can do in this website is we, we are trying to make connections between authors. Um, so like authors and their biographers or authors and their teachers or their students. Or um, So, if, so for, if you can link from Mignon Eberhardt to Rick Seipert, who is um, still here in Lincoln in writing, um, then you can, if you want to learn more about Mignon Eberhardt, you can learn a little bit about Ms. or Dr. Seifert. And um, and that'll, you know, that'll just get you one step closer to, <laughs> to um, more information. Um, and then we use this associations field that you can see right here to uh, <clears throat> to to link to different, you know, to to just expand the web. So if you know now that you're at Rick Seifert, you can also see that, oh, he worked with Bill Clefcorn, who was our state poet, and Bill, from Bill Clefcorn, you can link to other state poets or mm. um, people who wrote about him or wrote with him. So the just by going from one record to another, you can really mm. um, you can really go pretty deep into a, yeah. <laughs> um, into the rabbit hole of you know <laughs> Rick Seifert and his connections or Mignon Everhard or um, whoever. So that's uh, so you can do all that, but we just we started at the browse screen and um, you know you can you could do quite a lot from there. Just if you have free time, I mean, this, I imagine this is probably, yeah, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I imagine this would be acceptable desk time, uh, you know, activity just to, you know, to expand your knowledge of Nebraska writers and literature. Who's it's going to be asking and needing readers advisory on some topics. Exactly. And, this, this <laughs> and it's, will, yeah, and it's pretty fat. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty um, interesting um, and enjoyable way to spend time, I think. <laughs> um, so, so those are the featured authors. Um, and then there are different ways to browse if you are, if your patrons are looking for fiction by Nebraska authors and you, you just want to know who's writing fiction, you can, I mean, you can just search for fiction. It looks like there are 651 authors. I'm surprised that number's not bigger, actually, <laughs> right? Um, authors writing fiction in Nebraska. Possibly we haven't updated all of the author profiles and published them yet, but um, let's see. Um, let's try music and audio. We do include people who've written screenplays or um, or musicians or whose poetry has been turned to music. Um, so if you're looking for a musician who you might want to have for a library program, who might be in your area, you know, this would be a good place to go. If they don't have a deaf date, they're probably still <laughs> living somewhere. Yeah. Um, and so you can, you can use the search feature that way. Um, one of the ways that or I mean the browse feature, I'm sorry. One of the things that we did this year at Lincoln City Libraries was for the Dio, Dia de los Muertos in um, October with the Downtown Lincoln Association. We needed to find any authors who had recently died so that we could celebrate them with a, with, with an ofrenda um, and mm -hmm. celebrate their work and their life. Um, so we needed to find authors who had died within the last year. So um, I asked Aaron, or I mean, I asked Karen <laughs> specifically for this research, for, you know, for this uh, Lincoln City Libraries. I said, let's, let's make it an option to browse by death date. So she set up the death date feature for us. So you can see, you know, um, this, these are authors who've died within the last uh, 10, 10 years. Ten yeah. Um, and, and then it, you can see their, you can see their death date. Um, so it limits it 
um, quite a lot, and then you can find specific death dates like that. So, um, do we have any? Are there any questions about browsing? I mean, browsing seems pretty simple, I think. So, if there aren't any questions, we can nope. move on from there. Okay. Um, did I miss? Let anything? us know if you want to see anything or anything on yeah, the page you're okay. wondering about. Um, and then first letter of last name is, uh, you know, if you know, there was an author whose last name started with L. You know, I mean, that's like it, it's pretty simple. That'll just bring up any. Um, anyone whose last name begins with that letter. Okay, so that is browsing, um, searching. All right, so Karen made the comment earlier that the featured authors are um, are sorted first by whether or not the Heritage Room collects them. And so this is something, um, I don't know how to sensitively explain how we, <laughs> um, how we decided to do this. Um, so if by clicking this button, that indicates that the Heritage Room collects this author. And our collection policy has had to change a little bit in recent years with um, self-publish, indie publish. Um, we we have, there's quite a lot of people publishing um, and I'm sure your, your libraries have similar policies, but we, the Lincoln Library Different purchases libraries through, are have, yeah, yeah, we yeah. will or won't take local and um, self-publish depends, you know, if they're from our town, of course we would. Then of course, yeah, so we <laughs> yeah. have a similar, we have a similar policy and we, um, uh, right, we that that it allows for local authors, um, but published authors certainly we collect. And um, so, if you want to search for authors who um, who fall within our collection guidelines, then you can you can click Heritage Room Selects or Heritage Heritage Room Collects. So, um, look, looks like without selecting that, there are two thousand three hundred and seventeen um, authors that are in the or that are available right now, but if I do the Heritage Room Collects, it, mm, well, huh. <laughs> we knew something would break. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you have to hit the search button to make it do? I think she did, though. Uh, yeah, I did. So, okay. So, huh. Okay. Uh, so, I will write that down as something to look at. We just launched this last Sunday, so right, we're going right. to be so finding so, problems. Or maybe we just collect. Actually, this, is, uh, this might published. not be wrong, because we have prioritized authors oh, right. whose work we collect. And so, it's possible mm -hmm. um, there are are 2,000 additional records that haven't been published yet, so it's possible that everyone who's published are authors we collect. So I'm I'm sure just going to say that, that it's not yeah, <laughs> that it's not probably a collect or a problem with the website, but that anyone up there right now is our authors that we've prioritized, which means that we collect so they, their work. They got so, them into the database first. Yeah, right. And right. Then eventually, though, there will be more. There will be more authors. Are, Nebraska authors, but not <clears throat> not collected by the heritage. But group. their work is not collected by us, right? right. Um. So, so that, um, so I guess this will be more important in later searches after we've, you know, after we've updated more records. But, um, so let's just uh, use this field right here um, first. And this, there are several, as you notice with with the records. Um, I'll just click on the first one here, so you can see there are different uh, categories: places lived, um, what kind of work they do, the author of, keywords, education. These are all individual fields that you can search in. Um, but if you want to search all of those fields uh, to find, let's say you, you want to search for, um, I'm just going to say botany because I saw in the last browse that Bessie came up, and I'm hoping he comes up with botany here. Oh, was it? Yeah, maybe that's it. There we go. You just have to push <laughs> yeah, really hard. Our okay. Wireless keyboard has. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there he is. So um, I'm searching for botany right now, and it's searching anywhere in the field. So it's saying, you know, in the, it might indicate um, botany in their bio or in their degree, you know, it might or be in their title, educational degree. Or, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. the botany in their title. I'm just going to use Charles Bessie because he's kind of the the father of botany at um, the University of Nebraska. Um, and so you can search, uh, you can find any botanists from Nebraska and this will, you know, within any, so if you don't, if you don't see all of them just by searching botany that way, within in any individual author record, you should be able to find your way around botany publications coming from Nebraska. So, um, so there's Charles Bessie. He has a, he has a pretty good, um, can learn a little bit about him from his bio, but then you can also learn about Friedrich Clements. Um, from Friedrich Clements, you might want to go to Roscoe Pound, and then from Roscoe Pound, you can you can just you can go anywhere. You can mm -hmm. talk about law. You can talk about government. You, I mean, so um, so there's a lot of crossover here, but um, but that's just 
you know, that's just from searching for botany in the general field. So let me see. And I will mention too, um, for that researcher role, uh -huh. um, that searches those hidden role, roles oh, or right. hidden fields if you're logged in. So for the public, when they search this, they're going to search the non-hidden fields. But right. if, if you were to have that researcher role, it searches all of the fields, including mm -hmm. the hidden ones. So there might even be some yeah, additional information. Results. So that's another good reason to try to get that role. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say the first people that probably contact you are going to be our beta testers. So just be be aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. We're going to okay. try to break this. Yeah. <laughs> it's OK. Um, so uh, do, do you want to give any other examples? Should we find any other examples for? Uh. Um, like, I'm terrible at thinking of things to search for. Anybody <laughs> out there want us to search for something particular? Type it into your question section. Let us know, and we'll we'll and type in anything. I'm gonna just type in like a, a date, for example. Um, 19. Uh, I'm gonna try using these keys. I'm not no? sure that this is my keyboard's working great. Mm. Do you, does your keyboard work? We can, well, it's not connected. It's a to totally that, different. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, that's okay. We okay. <laughs> oh, there it goes. There it goes. Okay. So, <laughs> sort of. It's sort of. Works. <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna try um, a year because this will search anyone maybe who was born in that year. A book was published in that year. Like if 19. Let's. We're just gonna try um, 1918 because. I'm sorry, guys. I'm pushing numbers here. It's just not working very well. So if any of you want to try um, on your computers, typing in um, 1918, um, and then this is the. You, you know, if you need to celebrate in your library a hundred years of something, mm -hmm. you typing in 1918, you'll find any books published in 1918, anyone who died in 1918, anyone who's born in 1918. I mean, you'll find a hundred years of something to celebrate <laughs> in your library by typing in 1918. Um, but since the keyboard's not working, we'll go back to that. Um, and maybe we're going to improvise here. We're, we're, <laughs> 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 So while we're getting that set up, um, let me, right now, all of the records are uh, are available. So let's look at um, Grace Abbott. There's a lot of Abbots. There are a lot of Abbots. Yeah, they're, they were all, uh, there are a lot of Abbots reading and writing. So um, Grace Abbott was a great social worker. All right, we might come back to Grace Abbott in a minute if, if this keyboard works okay. Okay, we're gonna go back to search. 1918, yep, it works, yeah. okay. So is our Although, webcam disconnected, it looks like? Yeah, but okay. I'll fix that. Okay. Keep going. All right. <laughs> Okay, so there's 69 uh, results, and this is what you'll have to, you'll have to kind of search these 69 results to see. Um, what is important about 1918? And in some of these, okay, you know, you'll it, it'll be obvious. Like Lucia, that hardware. There we go. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. So if you want to celebrate the uh, 100th birthday. Oh, yeah. Which is actually just in a couple days, it looks like, of uh, Lucia Hearn, who was born in Omaha, who wrote the book The Ballad of the Baradas and Nebraska Legend. This would be the year to celebrate her, her 100th birthday. Um, but if you want to be more specific about your search, um, you might say you want to find books that were published in 1918. So in this case, you would go to the bibliography field, because in the bibliography, we have um, works. And I'm hoping my Antonia comes up here. Should. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Willa Cather. OK. Yes. So, so if, if you type in 1918, you know you're probably going to find a book that either um, has 1918 in the title or it was a book published in 1918. Mm -hmm. And so this is a good way for you to um, celebrate the centenary of a book. So. And I want to mention real quick that the illustration for this website up at the top comes from. I was that, wondering that, about that yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah it comes from my Antonia. Um, it was obviously a public domain now because it was published in 1918, so I could use the illustrations mm -hmm. that are in that book for oh, cool. um, illustrating the website. So I like I like public domain illustrations. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it looks very much like. 
being out on the prairie. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's some lovely illustrations. Yeah. In that book. And these are also the illustrations on your poster. So I hope everyone who's tuned in mm -hmm. in Nebraska has posters. If you don't, mm -hmm. uh, get in touch with me. But the um, the Humanities Nebraska gave us a generous grant to print post posters and bookmarks, and um, the, all that illustration that's on the post poster mm -hmm. comes from this as well. So now you'll be able to. Uh, tell your patrons the origin. But um, so this is this is our profile for Willa Cather. Um, and this is a picture that we have in the heritage room. Um, so going down to the bottom just to see where you um, she published a lot. Yeah she published a lot, but there's my Antonia 1918. And so um, so you know you know that um, we can celebrate the hundredth anniversary of that book. Um, so <clears throat> that's that's one of the you know one of the great features. Um, we can also use 1918, uh, or you know, just using 1918 again. You might want to see anyone who uh, graduated from college in 1918, for example. I don't know if this will find anyone, but um, yeah, 13 people um, that have 1918 in the education field. So uh, in this case, uh, Mr. Alexis got his degree. PhD from the University of Chicago in 1918. So, um, so that's how you can use the the uh, search all fields and the search single fields um, in more specific or productive ways. Um, so, one of the things uh, that I found to be really helpful is um, finding associations between authors. So, for example, last year we did the Nebraska 150 books. Mm -hmm. It's right. becoming hard with that website is no longer. We had a one-year mm -hmm. uh, grant for that website, so it's not up anymore. So, you get oh, quite okay. a lot of questions about the Nebraska 150 books list. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you want to find any authors who are included in Nebraska 150 books, you might um, you can type that in here. If you don't know which field it's in, you can just type it in here. and. Uh, Okay, so it looks like maybe it's searching any any, it's any, of, those any of those words. If you want to okay. search for the phrase, I think you can put quotes we'll around it. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah, we should probably add a little search help thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're we're that. learning as we go along. <laughs> I'm figuring out how these things work. Okay. So ninety-two results, so and these good. um these all look about right. Uh, so Jonas Ag, for example, um, and. I would have, I, since we put the information in here, I, I know that it's Nebraska, it's in the honors field, Nebraska, Nebraska 150 books honor for strange mm -hmm. angels. So you can, and you'll have to do some searching within fields to find um, what, the specific, what, what the specific mm -hmm. book was, but at least you have an option for finding anyone who was um, a Nebraska 150, a featured author in the Nebraska 150 books list. Mm -hmm. But um, you can also, I'm gonna try something like Nebraska Writers Guild. Oh, what did I do there? <laughs> okay. Let me see. Thumbs up. Um, and there should be more of these. Um, in a lot of cases, if Nebraska, um, when authors submit their information to us, they don't. They're not always complete about um, what they what they submit. Uh, so at some point, when we are um, when we have more time to work on. Right now, we're working on individual authors, but when we have more time to do things like we want to know who's been in Nebraska, you know, the whole history of the Nebraska Writers Guild. We want people to go to our website and see anyone who was ever in the Nebraska Writers sure. Guild. We'll, we'll assign that might be a good task for a um, student intern sometime to, you know, research the history of Nebraska yeah. Writers Guild. But at least you, you know, you, you should be able to find. Um, some authors who belong to the guild or um, who have belonged to the guild in the past. And <clears throat> so, this, so this field can be used for, for any searches like that. Um, we have a question about the search results. Okay. Um, can the sort be changed with search results? Can you click on like one of the headings, name, first name, birth date, and then have it to change the sort to that yes. order? Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll have Karen demonstrate. <laughs> so like, if you wanted to, to sort them by birth date, you can just click that and it, and, will, sort and it will sort which all the blank ones are first. So that's um, then oldest to yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And yeah, and actually if you click it again, it'll sort in the other direction. So you can, if you wanted mm -hmm. to get the, 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 most recent, yeah, the most recent first, you mm -hmm. could. Um, and one thing to note about the search is normally when you search, um, well, and when you search in some websites, you get what's called a relevancy ranking, which mm -hmm. means the most relevant um, results might be at the first 
at the top. We don't have that. We we rank everything by last name. We just sort of by that yeah. to start with. Um, and I certainly in the future would like to add some fancier search options to this, but that's that's what we have right now. So you might need to if you're getting a lot of results, you might need to narrow them down. In that way, you can click on any of those headings. Yeah, there and it'll yep. do the same thing. Yep. Cool. Any of these headers will. And again, going back to that that researcher role, um, that they get additional um, columns to sort on too. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. It. There's like date added or. Um, um, yeah, so you can, I think date added to the database is one of them, which can be nice because you can see all the newest authors right. that have been added to the site. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so there are a couple of extra sorting options um, if you get them on Cool. All right. All right, good. Um, so let's see, I, we have 15 minutes. Um, I'm not, we're going to for things yet. Okay. We'll get time I know. About <laughs> 11. We'll go as long as it takes for you to show it if we want to. And anybody have any questions? Okay. <laughs> so we'll, um, I think you guys can figure all that. I mean, I think there's enough information here that you can, you can figure out most of it. Um, one thing to, you know, to be aware of is that you, right now we've been searching anywhere in these fields, but if you know a last name, let's say it's, um, Mac, you don't know if it's Macintosh or Macintyre or Mac, you know, like but you, you, I know these these things happen all the time. Or you don't know if um, if Christensen is spelled Christiansen or Christensen, you know. So let's just actually that's it. That's a good example. Let's try that. Um, let's start. Let's find any Christiansens. We're just going to start with Christ at the beginning, and we're going to start at the beginning of last name. Okay, there are the Christiansen's, and you can no, see that there are lots of different ways to spell yeah. Christiansen. Um, actually, I really like the profile for Fred Christiansen, so we're going to start with him. Um, he's an interesting guy. Uh, and this is some inside knowledge we had from one of the, the uh, volunteers in the Heritage Room is the, is the son of Rudolf Umland. And so we, um, a lot of the images and um, information we have for the Nebraska Federal Writers Project has come from this collection. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of the pictures that um, Eric Umland took, um, and I love picture. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but this is um, this is what I love about the you know about the site that you can you, that we have information like sometimes on campus he would fall over and it was well known that he must be allowed to get up himself. Do not. He would here. strike anyone who came to save his pain. Um, so we do have you know we do have some unique um, and fun information. But this is uh, the Nebraska Federal Writers Project. We, we very rarely link outside of the website just because mm -hmm. author um, author websites, for example, uh, mm -hmm. are not always, they don't keep them current, they let their no. URLs up, you never know, um, yeah. we're worried about web, I mean, we don't have the staff right now to make sure that our links are always, we don't want to have a whole bunch of broken links. Mm -hmm. So we, we link within the website, so we can see Lowry Wimberly, who is in charge of the Federal Writers Project, um, or we do link to our own website. So this, for example, will take you to the Lincoln Library's Federal Writers Project, so you can learn more about Rudolf mm -hmm. Umland um, and about the authors who are who are part of the Federal Writers Project. So some of those links uh, do take you outside of the website as a rule, unless it's the mm -hmm. University of Nebraska, the Historical Society, or our own, or the library, you know, unless yeah. it's a Nebraska agency or um, a, a website that we are mm -hmm. confident <laughs> is going to be is going to be current. We don't we don't really uh, link outside. So um, so that is. I guess all that to say, that's how you would find Christensen if you don't know how to spell Christensen, <laughs> if you just know the beginning of Christensen. I would not have thought that there, I wouldn't even probably thought of that many different versions. Yeah, yeah, that's one of, the, one, of those, one of those names. Yeah. Um, and then, let's see, what else can I show you before we, um, okay, so if you want to search for, uh, let me think of a good example here. Um, what if we just went to, I mean, these are these are some of the browse features too, but just journalists, or you want to find a specific. Oh, and that's still had Chris. So you. Get oh, to, we still have yeah. Christensen. Oh, right. So you got to clear. So you find the one person. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> one Christensen who does. So let's just. You can always just do do that, but you know, this is a browse feature, so you can use any of those any of those browse features. You can search something within you if you want to know a, a journalist who wrote about. Um, I don't know. So like water, water, maybe water. Something. Okay, yeah, water. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if that brings yeah. up. Water. Yeah, six, six, six journalists wrote about water. Okay, I think this is all. I mean, fairly. You guys can 
mm-hmm. work with this. And those are, yeah. those are just, oh, and let's see if there's any authors. Just, just people with images, who, journalists you know. No, <laughs> so, so um, yeah, it, let's just see if anyone wrote about water who has a picture. So um, the, oh, oh yeah, Paul John's guard, obviously. Um, but we are working on getting images up on the website. We need to have permission for every image we use, so it's not fully illustrated yet. But, um, but if you need an image for the author you're searching for, um, you can limit it that way as well for, um, for authors with images, and that's Paul Johnsgard, who is a famous um, ornithologist and um, writes quite a lot about waterfowl, um, bird, water birds, <laughs> and other things. This is his bibliography. Wow. This was a this was one of the a semester long project for one of our uh, one of our you know, yeah. interns. I think he has more than ninety publications, so wow. it took quite a long time to find them all and note them all. But he is an important author in Nebraska, and, um, and I think probably only documented online and on this website. So um, he's a great person to feature. Okay, um, I'm going to go, unless there are any questions right now, I'm going to show how to contribute information. Is right. that, yes, that's what I was wondering about. Yeah, how, what yeah. are the criteria and how do you get Yeah, there? so within an individual author, and we'll stay here with John Scard, um, if you are looking at an author and you know something about them that we don't have on there, uh-huh. yeah, let's say their bibliography is incomplete, you know that they published two books since the last mm-hmm. one that we have noted, or or if you have some interesting biographical information, or um, in a lot of cases, we don't have um, maybe a birth city, or you know, there, there are things that um, would be helpful. And oh, actually, before I do this, I do want to show birth city because this is um, so, you know, since we're a statewide website, you might want to know who, what authors were published from your city. And I should have shown this right away. So we're in Lincoln right now. Who was born in Lincoln? So you can find out where authors were born by searching a birth city. So we have 146 people who were born in Lincoln. Um, but if you want to just know if anyone's lived in Lincoln, you can change that to places lived. Um, then we have a thousand people wow. who've ever lived a thousand, in Lincoln. Like a two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, you can see who has died in Lincoln. Um, Destiny. And that's 132. Um, and if you just, you know, if you. They leave the lots and lots of leaves because the grounds before they die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, let's just clear this out and do. I noticed there's also a burial city, was a whole separate one, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that they might, where they were buried. Yeah. And, yeah. So and that, that's one of those fields that we don't have information for a lot of them, so that might be a good contribute. Um, oh, you know right. Where burial information. Buried, you know, yeah. And that's. That's actually really valuable information for a lot, um, for a lot yeah. of people to know where graves are at various sites. So we, we want all this information. So let me show you how to do that. Let's just pick somebody here. Um, uh, let's go to somebody we haven't looked at yet. I've never heard of this. This is an example of a, oh. a, we, a person Perfect who could poetry. use yeah, <laughs> we could use uh, we could use some more information on Elmaz Abidinar. Abid- not yeah. are. Um, so if anyone has information on this person, please click on this button, add information about this author right here. And this will tell you a little bit about um, how to do it, what, uh, what we want. Uh, we would like to have everything sourced. If you give us a big biography mm-hmm. with no citation, it's going to take us a long time to figure out where the information came, you know, make sure that it's not, mm-hmm. that you haven't copied and pasted something from Wikipedia, from another site. Um, we have to be really, really careful about not um, not cribbing <laughs> information from another source without citing it. Um, and so it'll take us quite a lot longer to get information up on the website if it's not sourced. So if you're submitting mm-hmm. anything, please, um, please source it. And um, so here you'll give your name, your contact information, um, and then you know whether or not you would allow us to contact you, you know, if we have any questions about what you've submitted. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this is pretty self-explanatory. Karen has given you all the, all the little hints you need to, um, yeah, to tell us what we need. So if we've missed some important pieces of information, this is the place you would, um, you would put them. So this is, I'm just going to do this. It'll, these come to an email address that I checked. So my name is Erin Phillips. And um, this is the website, or this is the email address. 
where all the information goes. Um, you would type your own email address here so that I can I can contact you. And we left a generic at contact for a reason. If somebody mm -hmm. like just goes, you know, I just really don't use email, even though they use this website somehow. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if they want to put a phone number in there, they can. right, it could be anything. Yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah. It's, right, so you can just make a note. I mean, you can. Yeah, you can just make a note to contact you. It's not. This is the the emails that we get are. We, if there's a physical person who reads them and checks that, you know, so you can make notes. It's not auto automated. So. No, right, right. right. Yeah, so we can, we didn't do that on purpose just because we didn't want people adding junk into the database. So it all has okay. to be vetted and. Um, so you could right. So you could even you could just say there's information about this guy from Wikipedia. Here's the website URL. Please add information. I mean, so you don't have to you don't have to necessarily type everything in here. You can mm -hmm. just show us where to go even to find to find information. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that. And it doesn't change his profile. And there should be a note here to say, please wait for a couple of months. <laughs> um, it might. Yes. We don't tell you that we don't necessarily want to include. So, so right. one of the things we were staff expert expect corrections or additions to take time, sometimes up to three months. Right. It's the bullet second from the last. Yeah. 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 And then a lot of times um, authors will want us to put their website up there. We don't mm -hmm. do that. We, we will put that in a hidden field. Um, so anyone who has researcher abilities will be able to see. Mm -hmm. um, there's a hidden biographical field, and that's where we'll put anything like personal author websites. Um, Things that you know, things that we don't want to have to maintain, mm -hmm. um, and there are there are um, things that we we tend to talk in past tense um, or present tense. Like we're not going to say the author lives with his wife and kids in Utah because we don't want to have to if they move then change. change. Yeah, we just yeah. we don't have that. Um, we don't have the ability to keep up with where people are living now and where. I mean, so everything everything that we put on there has to be past or. Um, past tense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, um, I mean, if you're if you're we alive and writing in Nebraska, we yeah, the cities live to be able. It's like yeah. cities live. Just yeah, like, even if you're living in Lincoln, it's just going to say it's yeah, just yeah. going to say Lincoln. It's, we're not going to say the author currently lives in Lincoln. So, um, so those are things that if you submit that information, we'll, we might put it in a hidden field for a researcher, um, mm -hmm. a librarian to look at, but we're not going to probably. Uh, put that up for the public because we don't want no, to. You don't have to want to have to maintain it. Yeah, that researcher access would you use that same email address in Nebraska authors. Yes. Yeah, so if you want researcher you. access, if you'd like to have access to those fields, um, just email. And my my email address is in several places on the website. This is one of them right here. It's Nebraska authors at LincolnLibraries.org. Uh, yeah, it's a long. <laughs> you can go ahead and copy and paste that. <laughs> Um, you can also find it um, here on the about page. I think it's on the about page. Do we have a contact right here? <laughs> Maybe there's not a contact. Um, it might be on the contribute page. We should add something. Yeah, there. there's okay. So the contribute page for sure has it. Um, here's the contact. Yeah, there address. it is. Yeah. So you can. This is me. Um, I'm Erin. You can contact me at the library at that phone number or at that email address or stop off anytime. Mm -hmm. um, and while we're here, this will be the last thing I show you. This is uh, this is what we're hoping you guys can all help us out with. Mm -hmm. It is an incomplete, um, will probably always be a complete website, but we want it to be as complete as possible. And um, we need your help to do that. Uh, so if you go to this contribute button, you can even tell your patrons, if you have patrons who come in who say, mm -hmm. I wrote this book, um, will you put it in your library, <laughs> or will you know how to buy? Will you acknowledge me on your website? You can direct them to this website, um, to the contribute field, and it's very easy. These are the instructions about how to do it, why we do it, um, limitations. And that's what I want to know is that what is the criteria for being in this database? Um, so, so this is these are the criteria that we use, and these are based on um, these are based on the books that I was referencing at the beginning, the 1918 mm -hmm. guide. They have um, kind of uh, an evolving definition of a Nebraska author. Sure. Technically, anyone who was ever born in Nebraska, whether they moved away or you know mm -hmm. even at a young age, if you were born in Nebraska, they are a Nebraska author. Um, we also, believe, you know, we use 10 years as a significant experience, you know, so mm -hmm. because it kind of limits anyone who just maybe just, like just was here. Yeah, just was here for college. college. Just here for college, right. right. Unless they wrote a significant amount of work when they were in college in Nebraska. I mean, so mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, 
pretty loose. <laughs> um, and then they come to the significant life experience in Nebraska. Yeah. So, so yeah. in the case of somebody like um, Tom McNeil is the example that I like to use. He he was here during his summers. As you know, he was here with his grandparents, but his books are thoroughly Nebraska. You know, I mean, it's Good Night Nebraska, uh, and everything has, or not everything, but quite a lot of what he writes is has a Midwestern um, mm -hmm. Nebraska. And, um, and he did, even though it wasn't a sustained 10 years, he was here often enough for long enough that we still, we still call him a, a Nebraska author. Um, in a lot of, in some cases, and I can't think of an example right now, but if somebody's not a Nebraska, if it's clear that they're not a Nebraska author, we might say in their profile, he doesn't fit our def definition of Nebraska authors, but we include him here because of his association yeah, with this exception. Exception. Yeah, yeah. This reason. So yeah. It, it's not a, it's not hard and fast, um, but we, and again, going back to that researcher role, there are a few people in there that have been rejected from the public website, but but kept in the database. Mm -hmm. And so there might be people that don't meet the criteria, right. but we don't delete the entry because maybe a researcher might have a reason to find them. But right. um, so there are a few entries like that in there too. This is all types of writing. This isn't just fiction. This is this is all Not types of writing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. screenplay, yeah. music. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, including there even some artists in there, you know, whose contributions were um, significant enough that they were written about, you know, that there's enough literature about the, um, so I don't know if Henry's up here right now, but somebody like, um, you know, so Robert Henry was an artist, and actually he did write a book too, so, um, but he was also written about by Mari Sandoz, he was, Dwight Kirsch is another Nebraska um, author, but, so he did write, the art spirit, but also his, you know, Mari Sandoz wrote The Son of a Gambling Man based on him, right? Um, but then somebody like Dwight Kirsch, who's also a, known for being an artist, um, he's connected so deeply with the, you know, with the Nebraska literary community. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have a bibliography, um, but... I don't want to, I don't want to blame him on here, but that, that might be our, our mistake, but, um, so it's not, um, so there's, a, there's a broad definition of, um, author and it, it includes, mm -hmm. we do have a question about adding here, um, which is a good question, I think, should there be a note sent to the Nebraska Writers Guild for their members to update their information? Are you ready for that influx mm -hmm. of new contributions? Uh, yes. So we, um, we originally, we were, <laughs> we were very ambitious about, you know, I have, um, we've been updating um, email addresses, for example, on this Nebraska, um, Nebraska author's email address. Mm -hmm. um, and we have maybe 800 Nebraska author email addresses. And I thought, okay, when this, when we do, you know, when we take the passwords off the website, I'm going to do an email blast and ask them to all submit information. And then I realized, Wow, there's That's no crazy. way like that. That just kind of sets up the expectation that then by mm -hmm. two weeks hence we're going to have uh, all, all of their all of updated, yeah. um, and that is not uh, not possible for us. So I would say yes, go ahead with the understanding that um, we're a small staff and it'll take a little bit. I mean, is, is there up to three months? It would up take to three months, yeah. yeah. And so, um, so for yes, sure. please send it out. We want authors to have their, their information updated, but that they um, should understand it's not gonna be immediate. So go ahead and do that, Scott, yeah. if you want to. So <laughs> I went ahead and clicked on that green button. Well, let me just go back here. So at the end of the, or at the bottom of the contribute page, click on contribute, and this is where you suggest an author, and this, Thank you, Karen, has made, this is very easy. This is the submitter information. So the submitter does not necessarily have to be the author. So if you're a, a librarian submitting a name on behalf of a patron, for example, you would put your information as a librarian here. Um, and then this is the author information and you just fill in those fields and it makes it really easy for us. So, um, uh, and these are just the fields on the website, as you see. I like that it has the definitions and explanations about what's in each of those fields. Right, right. Yeah. So that should be that should be easy. I don't think I really need to. Um, and again, those won't appear on the website instantly. It goes to right. somebody who has to an actual human being. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So as human being, puts yeah. this information on the website, um, and so, and. 
Yeah. <laughs> so it, it does. It is. And it might happen that somebody contributes one that is actually one of the 2,000 authors that you haven't been able to publish yet. But that's, yeah, 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 that's right, a good sure. indication that, hey, someone's interested in this author. Maybe we'll move yeah. them to the front of the queue. And that's good. It helps yeah. us to prioritize because in a lot of cases, we probably will have the author profile and we can just, this will help us fill in any information we don't have and then realize that, oh, there's public interest in this author. We will go ahead and put that in the front and um, get it out there. And those are, unless Karen has something to add, those are the important features of the website. You can go here to see anyone who's worked on the website. These are, our, this is our team. Um, seems like, it's like a lot of people. <laughs> it's a pretty big project. It's like, yeah, it takes, it takes yeah, a lot I'm of just like, I mean, I'd like to say thank you to my team. I mean, Erin um, has kind of been referring to me as if I built the website. <laughs> like, I did the design. Um, but most of the actual, almost all of the actual programming and building of the website was um, Greg and Jessica, the two programmers, and um, Laura Weekly has helped with um, just metadata cleanup a little bit and proofing and um, all kinds of things. So. And, okay. again, and Kay Walter and our um, our dean too, the dean of UNL Libraries, Nancy Bush, has been a big supporter and, you know, this, this wasn't, a lot of our, our projects are grant funded and this was mm -hmm. one that's kind of you know, snuck in there yeah, because so people dedicated. believed in it and, yeah, and wanted, right. wanted to see it. So, and it is um, our my library director, Lincoln City Libraries, Pat Leach, has um, given some of my staff time and um, mm -hmm. has allowed uh, some of our, like Jeff Tantman, for example, is the Lincoln Libraries cataloger and he does a good job making sure that everything is uniformly. <laughs> um, uh, accurate in the website, and we have Stephen Cloy doing a lot of the writing, um, Kim mm -hmm. Jorgensen doing a lot of the, she's a fantastic reference librarian, and she's great at sleeping dates and mm -hmm. uh, other important factual information, and then the students and the, um, and the volunteers have done, been really helpful, and I haven't mentioned yet the Nebraska Literary Heritage Association, and I do need to mention them. The NLHA is a uh, the funding arm of the Heritage Room. It's uh, the Heritage Room is not a publicly supported collection. We're supported by um, an endowment grant that's through the Nebraska Literary Heritage Association, which is under the umbrella of the Foundation for Lincoln Libraries. And so, funding for the collection and the work of the collection comes from the NLHA, and it's a great board. We get a lot of support from them as well. So, um, thanks to them. And um, I like to let you have a technical details. So, if oh. you are really into <laughs> how there you go, <laughs> if you're a programmer yourself or wondering how is this happen, yeah. and a shout out to Open Refine, which I used oh, yeah. like initially cleaning up a lot of that data. That was a huge help. You know, getting those dates in the same format, and um, yeah, it was a very very useful tool. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Unless there are Anybody questions, else? I think we, Anybody yeah. we touched on everything. Yeah, we're a little after 11 o'clock. That's OK. Anybody have any last minute desperate questions they need to ask of Aaron um, or Karen? You can type it in right now. Otherwise, your contact info is on contact the page there. there. Mm -hmm. um, and you can reach out at any time you want to. There's more. Use a database to become a researcher. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. I'm glad um, Aaron contacted me about um, coming on the show. and. Uh, voting this, which is great. We, 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 we I was glad we get it right in right after it went live. Yeah. <laughs> um, of course, when the errors might still be there. But, um, <laughs> it's, dangerous. Okay. it's in beta. It's yeah. all right. <laughs> um, it, it's all good. All right. Um, but it doesn't look like any desperate questions come in, so I think we'll wrap it up. Thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, we take the mouse and the keyboard, the good keyboard. <laughs> the we have the, our wireless keyboard sometimes has um, charging issues. I believe it was left on by accident. <laughs> so um, we have a backup because you always have to have, you never know. Oh, and thanks to the Library Commission. I did not put that in there. Yeah, the Library Commission has been very helpful in, um, in getting, you know, proving a lot of these things and telling yeah. us the authors we've missed. And I know so we do get a lot of um, contacts, but because we have our book club kits with, with people um, getting involved in different offers, and you never know who they're going to want to, you know, focus on for their book clubs and their discussion groups and things. So this will definitely help with that, I'm sure, finding. Like you said, we want to do a book. We have a reading group in our town, and let's read somebody from here. Does anybody know who's from here? Yeah. Ta -da! There you, go. There you, go. <laughs> you totally can. All right. Um, all right. So um, that'll wrap it up for today's show. And I'm going to um, go over here and show you where. So far in the world, yes. Um, and Compass Library is the only, our show is the only thing called this. 
So if you Google or use your search engine of choice to type in Encompass Live, you will get the Library Commission's website and the Encompass Live page. Uh, the show has been is being recorded and will be posted on the website uh, later this afternoon, I'd say, as long as the, the um, YouTube and everything uh, cooperates. Our upcoming shows are here, but to get our archives, they're right here underneath um, the upcoming schedule. And you can see this is one from last week. This week's will be here with recording um, as well. There's no presentation. There's no slides or anything. If there is slides for a presentation, they're included as well. I think we have this one from last week. Yeah, so there was a presentation for this one um, and a handout. So whenever there's anything like that related to a session, we do include all of that. So the most recent ones will be here at the top of the page. So later this afternoon, um, today's show will be posted on there. I'll let everyone know who registered for today's show and attended today when it's available and ready to um, watch. Um, this is our full archives here. Encompass Live is actually, this is the 10th year of Encompass Live, which was um, a little stunning when I realized that and did the math and <laughs> figured it out. Um, and I'm going to scroll down here. Um, anyone who gets a little uh, vertigo, close your eyes. I'm going to scroll all the way down. This is our entire archives are here for all 10 years. So if you go to the very bottom of the list, January 2009 was our very first show. So yes, you will find um, old sessions here. We have all of the archives. They're posted to the Nebraska Library Commission's. The recordings are posted to the Library Commission's YouTube account. Um, and they're all there, so you will find things out of date, um, uh, old information, outdated information, potentially incorrect information 10 years later. But they're all dated, so you know exactly when it was done. Um, we are librarians, we archive everything. So that's the deal. It's all on here. I'm going to scroll back to the top now. You can also search this. We do have search features just recently been added to it. You can limit it to the most recent 12 months if you want to, or search the entire archives. And you can search here um, by anything, any information that's listed in a session here. So um, author or presenter, anything in the title, in the description, all these fields here about the, who the presenters were listed down here. This will be all be included when you do a search in our archives. Um, oh, we do have a little comment. Oh, somebody comment about the data about you guys, about the um, Nebraska Authors Database. Um, thanks so much for this project. I know a lot of our libraries are going to love having this resource. Thank you. Oh, we so hope so. Yeah. yeah. Hope it gets more out there. Yeah. So, um, so that'll be the archives, and I hope you join us next week then when our topic is another actually UNL session. Um, your partners in service accessing UNL libraries resources. Uh, Dana Baden and Joan Konecki from the University of Nebraska Lincoln also here will be coming over here next week to talk about the resources that are available at the libraries, even if you are not a student or affiliated with the university, they have services available to you. So um, they will be on the show next week, so please do sign up for that or any of our other topics we um, have here coming up. I've got all of May booked and posted. I'm working on sessions for June, so our, our, our sessions are very posted very um, immediately. So. Um, I'm, I'm always on top of anything new that might be coming up. So I don't have like things booked out six months ahead of time. <laughs> I have to figure out this much ahead of time. So um, keep an eye on our, our schedule here to see if anything new comes up. Sign up for any of those that are on there. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. So if you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there. there you go. And you'll be notified of when new sessions are um, being posted. Here's a reminder to log into today's session when we, no, I don't want to log in. <laughs> um, <laughs> when um, recordings are available. So if you are, um, if you like to use Facebook a lot, like give us a like and you'll be notified over there of what's going on in the show. Other than that, that wraps up for this week's show. Thank you everyone for attending this morning. Thank you guys for coming over here today. And we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.